Trinadapisini chena turor iva sahishnuna Amani na mana dena kirtaniya sadahari Hare nama hare nama Hare nama iva kevalam Kalo nastiva 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 gatiranyata Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So there is a verse by the father of Vyasadeva. His name is Parasharamuni. He has given a very nice definition of the word Bhagavan. Aisvarasya samagrasya viryasya yashasa sriya Jnana Vairagyos Chaiva Shanam Bhaga Itingana. Godhead has six opulences. He has those opulences completely. And he has them unlimitedly. You and I may have one opulence. Or maybe two. Or three, four, five, or all six. But nobody can claim I have all the opulences unlimitedly. That is but one reason why we are not God. But we are a small fragment of the potency of God. So, in today's verse, one of those opulences is mentioned. As it says here, Udama Yashasam. That the fame of God and his devotees is spread everywhere. Prabhupada mentioned at the beginning of the purport what is the definition of Bhagavatam? Literally means the pastimes of the Lord and the devotees. Not just the Lord and not just the devotees but both together. This is bhakti. It requires two. It requires someone who is worshipful and one who is worshipping. God is worshipful. And the devotee is the worshipper. Now, when we come to the Panchatattva, the Panchatattva is one manifesting in five features. This is explained in the Adi Lila of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And since we are quickly approaching Gaura Purnima, we should remember the Pancha Tattva. Indeed, Prabhupada writes that before speaking, before Kirtan, you have to chant the names of the Pancha Tattva. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Hara Srivas Rigor Bhakta Vrinda So, Krishna, the Absolute Truth, is one. But he's manifesting as five different features. The first three are Vishnu Tattva. They are on the platform of God Himself. Están en la misma de Dios. 
Then the fourth is the internal potency of the Absolute Truth. Gadadhar is the expansion of Srimati Radharani. Or Shakti Tattva. The truth of the divine energy of God. Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda and Advaita are directly God. But the fifth item of the Pancha Tattva represents Jiva Tattva. Uh, Srivas Thakur is actually Narada Muni. And he is Jiva Tattva. Just as we are Jiva Tattva. Now, Prabhupada writes on this point that actually the worshipper is on one sense on the same platform of the worshipful. And this can only be understood when one understands the specific philosophy of Lord Chaitanya. The four Vaishnava Acharyas. Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, Vishnu Swami, Nimbarka. They all have a specific philosophy. Slightly different, but basically the same. So, any of the four Vaishnava Sampradayas is excellent. But the Shankara philosophy, the Mayavad Sampradaya, that can never be accepted. Lord Chaitanya taught that if you embrace Mayavad philosophy, your spiritual life is doomed. You have committed spiritual suicide, even though the soul is eternal. But from this perspective, you are spiritually dead. So Lord Chaitanya has his specific philosophy, which actually incorporates all four of the Vaishnava Sampradayas. And everyone should know this philosophy. Achintya Veda Veda Tattva. That everything is simultaneously one and different from the Absolute Truth. Once this is clearly understood, then you can easily understand all Vedic philosophy. Lord Chaitanya's principle has to be understood. That something can be the same and at the same time different. You have to expand your consciousness. And the first word, inconceivable, meaning that so many of the things that we learn in Krishna consciousness may or may not be understandable by materialists. It may or may not make sense materially. So therefore, it's inconceivable. 
And then there's another instruction about this. That that which is inconceivable is not a question for debate. You either accept it or not. So, let's give an example. We see in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I'm here, but I'm not here. So that doesn't make sense. Materially, it doesn't make sense. But once you understand Achintya Beda Beda Tattva, it makes sense. Krishna himself, the original Krishna, he's in the spiritual world. In the material world right now, he is present by means of his energy. The material energy we learn from Bhagavatam is non different from him. But it's not really him. But it represents him. Or we also hear another thing. Krishna is near and at the same time far away. There's a mantra in the Ishopanishad. He's near and he's far. Material, that, materially, that's not makes sense. But yes, Krishna, Krishna Loka is so far away. But as I mentioned last night, he's right there in your heart. So he's near, he's the nearest thing to you in the form of super soul. But then again, he's far, far away in Goloka Vrindavan. Another example. We are all human beings. So, we're one. But, you are a woman. I'm a man. There's a difference. We're one and different. You, we are all human beings. But you live and you are Chil Chilean, you're gringo, <laughs> right? Diferente, right? You speak Spanish. I speak English. So there's oneness and there's also difference. So as you learn and study Gita, Bhagavatam, and this Chaitanya Charitamrita. More and more, you will start to see how everything is simultaneously one and different. Probably one of the best examples. The sun globe and the sun ray. sun ray shine sun ray ray right see so the sun globe too powerful very large the sun ray is non different from the sun no difference but the sun ray you like. You open the curtain and you let the sun ray come in. Very nice. But sun planet come into your room? Finish. If the sun moves one inch, the whole planet bursts. 
So, the sun and the sun ray, simultaneously one and different. The sun represents God. The sun rays represent jivas. Lord Chaitanya himself uses that example. When he's preaching to Sanatan Goswami, the famous verse, Jivera Swarupa Hai Krishnera Nityadas. And then the very next line, Kirana. Kirana means sun ray. The, the jiva soul is like a particle of sunlight coming from the almighty sun, God himself. Simultaneously one, different. The ocean and a drop of water. No drop of water is one and the same as the ocean. But the ocean is vast and the drop of water, poquito, poquito, poquito. One and different. Now, Lord Chaitanya in preaching to the Mayavadis, such as Sarva Bauma Bhattacharya and Prakashananda Saraswati, at that time they were the two topmost Mayavadis in all of India. Prakashananda had 60,000 sannyasi disciples. Sixty thousand, yes, quite a few. Jai Pataka Maharaj has a few thousand disciples, but Prakashananda had sixty thousand sannyasi disciples. So he was big, big, and Sarvabhoma was regarded as the topmost Mayavad scholar. But Lord Chaitanya defeated them by his philosophy of Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. So in preaching to these two great Mayavadis, Lord Chaitanya told them, all the Vedas are only teaching three things. One is known as Sambandha. Una es sambandha. sambandha means knowledge which reminds you or informs you that you are spirit soul. And that as a spirit soul, you have a forgotten eternal relationship with Krishna. So whether you read Gita, Bhagavatam, any Vedic scripture, you are going to learn that the spirit soul, which is who you really are, has an eternal forgotten relationship with the Absolute Truth. And Prabhupada makes the point that relationship is service. That is the meaning of relationship. That's why Lord Chaitanya said, Jivera Surupurai Nitya Krishna Das. Eternally the servant. 
past, present, future. That's never going to change. You are always going to be servant. So you should get used to it. You should accept it. Even when you go back to the kingdom of God, you're still going to be a servant. You're not going to be el jefe. You will still be servant. This is something that for 99% of the world, they do not like. Because in the material world, everyone is trying to become el jefe. Supremo. No es posible. The post is already filled. No applications being accepted. God's position is already taken. <laughs> so you should get used to the fact I am only a servant. That's why I like to sing that song. You're going to have to serve somebody. Because that's the absolute truth. We learn from Prabhupada's books. You have two choices. That's it. Serve Krishna. Serve Maya. Make your choice. These Vedas are teaching us what happens when you serve Maya. Kick. You serve Maya, she's going to kick you. That's her service. Her service is to kick you. And she kicks and kicks and kicks until you surrender. So every one of us, at some point, realized, I am tired of being kicked. And so we decided to surrender to Krishna. And now the kicking has stopped. So when you become a devotee, ah, relief, tranquilo, no more kicking. You take shelter of Krishna. And you hold tight to Krishna's lotus feet. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Sambandha, understanding your eternal relationship with Krishna. And we want to always be reminded of that constantly. As I said yesterday, around our neck for constant remembrance. I must be lower than the blade of grass. More tolerant than the tree. Devoid of all sense of false prestige. And offer all respects to others. Because Krishna is in everyone's heart. 
This concept of being meek and humble. There is a nice meditation. People sometimes ask Hare Krishna people. Do you do meditation? So when I'm asked this, I say, oh yes. I do tree meditation. Yo hago meditación del pasto. What, is, what is that tree meditation? ¿Cuál es, cuál es esa meditación del pasto? Do you envision a tree? ¿Tú visualizas un pasto? No, I tell them, now you listen. Arbus, arbus, arbus. Yes. The tree, when it has no fruits or flowers, arbus, no tiene frutos, ni flores. the branches are like this, tall, stretching. So, somebody who is puffed up, proud, puffed up, that means he has no fruits or flowers. But when a tree has so many fruits and flowers, The branches go like this. Oh, too many fruits, too many. The branches bend low. Because it has too many fruits. So the devotee has so many fruits of love of Godhead to distribute. That he's like this. You read the how Hiranyaksha. When Hiranyaksha was born, he had his mace and he would go throughout the universe and he was very tall and he was challenging all the demigods. You fight with me. And then when he approached Varuna, Varuna was very smart. I'm too old to fight. But don't worry. Very soon someone is coming who will put you in your place. And here on Yaksha was very happy. Ah! So Varuna told him, just you wait. Someone will lay you down. And then Lord Brahma felt something in his nose, a little boar, pequeño, pequeño boar, hog, but then expand, and then Varaha and Hiranyaksha fought. And the demigods were worried. The time was getting late. Kill him, kill him, Lord, kill him. So what did Varaha do? That's it. Killed him just like this. Boom. Can anybody kill someone guy going like this? No. If somebody comes with a gun, oh wait, let me. <laughs> But Lord Varaha is God. That's all he has to do. Lord Balaram. How did he kill Roma Harshan? With a blade of grass. <laughs> right now, the militaries all over the world, they have big rockets and guns. Balaram only needs a blade of grass. Omnipotent Balaram. The second item that Lord Chaitanya says that the Vedas are teaching. Abhideha. Activities in terms of your eternal relationship with God. 
prioridades en términos de tu eterna relación con Dios. Once you are convinced that you are Krishna's eternal servant, then there must be activities or a way of life by which that is demonstrated. That is the platform you are on right now. Once you accept a spiritual master, you are on the platform of Abhideha. Everything you're doing is reinforcing that I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. Mangalarti, Tulsi Puja, Guru Puja, Bhagavatam class. All these activities are confirming, affirming, I am the eternal servant of Krishna. The very first prayer in the morning. Vande Guru Sri Charanaravindam. Surrender to Krishna's representative. What is the meaning of this song? Same thing. <laughs> we are surrendering to Krishna's representative. We are coming to the class. That is also, all this Bhagavatam is simply reminding you every day you are the eternal servant of Krishna. Act accordingly. All the Vedas are simply teaching that. Now we come to the third item. So, in life, everybody is doing something in order to get something. So the same applies here. If I'm the eternal servant of Krishna, and if I act as the eternal servant of Krishna, what do I get? And the answer is prayojana. The third item. Prayojana means love of God. Not wealth, not fame, not women or men, not better material life, love of God. All the Vaishnava songs are simply glorifying love of God. Love of God is the essence of all religion. That is the real religion. Whether it's Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, doesn't matter. The question that should be asked Am I learning how to love God? And when I was Catolica, the first 19 years of my life, I was taught Jesus dice. That's right? Correcto? Love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is what they taught me. The nuns, the priests. I went to 13 years of Catholic school. 
¿Cuántos años? 19 años. 19 años en la escuela católica. And then I became a hippie. <laughs> But they taught me this two commandments. So when I preach to Christians, I tell them, I am doing exactly what Jesus said to do. Jesus said, love God with your whole soul, your whole heart, your whole mind. I'm doing that right now. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Anyone who chants sincerely knows I am chanting with my whole heart, my whole mind, my whole soul. And love my neighbor as myself. I'm better than you. You kill animals. Animals are my neighbor. How come I don't kill animals and you do? I am better Christian than you. Because I love the animals. I don't even want to step on an ant. So, Hare Krishna. Love of God, Lord Chaitanya taught, is the ultimate goal of life. Prema Pumartho Mahan. First, human life or human civilization begins with dharma, religion. The result is that you become materially benefited. And with that, you enjoy your senses. But there is a problem. No satisfaction. Yes, you're religious. Yes, you got material profit. Then you enjoyed your senses. But you're not happy. Then you want to go for happiness. So you go for liberation, moksha. But Lord Chaitanya says, there's something higher. Fifth item. Love of God. And that is what Lord Chaitanya's movement is promoting. Love of God. Centered around the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Muchas gracias. Hare Krishna.